it is time for the side-by-side -side comparison, video and photo mode of the Google Pixel 4a versus the iPhone SE 2020 edition, the battle of the budget. So let's just jump on outside. What's up everybody, this is Scott. Welcome back to another video. Well, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of the iPhone SE 2020 edition and the Google Pixel 4a, which is also a 2020 edition, but honestly, it's kind of the battle of the budgets and the battle of the small phones. Both of these phones have a much smaller footprint, uh, but the Pixel 4a actually has a little bit bigger of a screen and has that uh, little notch in the upper left-hand corner, whereas the iPhone SE has the very small footprint, very much like an iPhone, I don't know, eight-ish, something very, very small. Uh, but yeah, so this is a battle of these two particular budget-conscious phones. So this video is going to talk about videos, I'm going to talk about photos, side-by-side -side comparison. I'm going to shoot the majority of it actually on both of these devices, flip-flop the audio. So let me know in the comments which ones you actually think sounds better, which ones you think look better. No post-processing, obviously done. I might uh, do a little bit of work on the gain if I have to. But yeah, let's get right into it. Both of these devices are a front-facing uh, 1080p 30 frames per second shooter. Uh, so yeah, everything you see here on the front-facing camera is 30 frames a second 1080p. I have both devices on like this crazy contraption and holding it about an arm's length away switch pod. So yeah, everything you see here is effectively as equal as it gets. I'm also walking, so you can see this here. Walking through some fairly tall grass, so I have to pick up my feet more than I normally would. So yeah. This is what you see, this is kind of what you get in terms of what this looks like from a stabilization perspective, uh, front-facing camera. So now this is the rear-facing camera. Uh, so the iPhone is 4K and I moved it down to 30 frames a second, but it does have the ability to go 60 frames a second. Pixel is also 4K, 30 frames a second, straight up out of the regular camera app. You do have the ability in the Pixel to go all the way to uh, 60 frames a second or 24 frames a second using a third-party app. But for apples and apples comparison, I wanted to be able to do this. But honestly, the big takeaway here is the fact that the uh, iPhone SE can shoot 4K 60 frames a second and actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna switch to just the iPhone for here just a second. Now I wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison. 4K 60 frames a second native app for the Apple device, but on the Pixel, the Pixel is through an app called ProTake, which if you watched a video or two of mine ago, talked about one of my favorite Apple apps. Had the ability to get it on Android as well, but the most interesting thing about this is it's filming what it says right now, 4K 60 frames a second out of the Google Pixel 4a. Okay, so I just tried to do a 4K 60 frames a second using the Pixel device uh, using ProTake, even though I thought I could pull it off and. Sadly, that's not the case. ProTake was just like, Bleh! and it just completely like seized on it. Um, I've tried it with Filmic Pro as well. 4K, 60 frames a second, for whatever reason, is just not something that the pixels can handle for, yeah, again, whatever reason. But it didn't stop the iPhone at all. That thing is chugging right along 4K, 60 frames a second. So from the perspective of 4K, fricks. What? So from the perspective of 4K 60 frames a second, the advantage definitely goes to the iPhone. However, and again, this is just by me looking everything through the phone and not in post-production or the production studio at all. Honestly, I really like the look uh, and the video upgrade that I have seen out of the 4A. And you all know that I have been very critical of the pixels because they have been lacking in the video department when compared to the iPhone. But honestly, 
I really like the way that the 4A handles video. And it gets me really excited for the Pixel 5 or whatever the future might hold for Pixels because it just looks really freaking good. You can see that the Pixel has had a significant upgrade compared to that of its former cousin, the 3A XL or the 4XL. And I'm going to do a comparison video if I haven't already. But you can see that Pixel is definitely getting better in terms of the audio department on the video because it used to just be hot trash. And the video has significantly gotten better, in my personal opinion. I actually really like recording video on it. I feel like you could use a Pixel device to actually vlog and it not sound and look like total hot trash. So we all know that the photos themselves speak volumes when it comes to a Google Pixel device, but it's the video that I've actually seen upgrade quite a bit compared to that of its former counterparts. These are two of the lowest priced phones that you can get today and really expect good high quality when it comes to photos and videos. So let me know what you think about in the comments, which one did you like the best? Personally, I know for sure when the camera was facing away or using the rear facing camera on the iPhone, the audio just wasn't that good compared to the Pixel or even its front facing counterpart on the front of the iPhone. So yeah, let me know in the comments below which one you prefer. And that's it, that's all I have. Thanks for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below. We'll see you next time.